G'day my friends, Marty Ware here from Marty's Garden. Now I've got a really cool vlog for you today because we're down at the local landscapers where I live, chasing leaf mulch. Now leaf mulch is when they wood chip off the sides of the streets, the thin branches and small trees out of people's front yards and they dump them off at local landscapers or use them locally or sell them to people around the area. And if you're lucky you've got a wood chip in nearby, you might even get them to drop it off at your place for free. But there's certain things that you're looking for when you're getting this type of material, depending on what you're using it for. Now, I'm going to be using it for three different things. I'm going to be using it for my uh, carbon area around where the chickens are. And I'm going to be using it to make a potting mix and also in my blends for my composts and I'm using it also like as a bedding for the worm farms and things but it all sort of interblends together for the micro farm where I sell my compost to the locals so here's the pile behind us we've got another older pile behind which I hear is even better material but I've got to go and have a look apparently it's all muddy and everything around the back so Let's go and have a squizzy and I'll cover it more in this video to help you decide what you need for your place and there's the reasons because maybe you might go, oh, I never even thought of that. I'm going to get some of this and use that too. All right, so let's go. We'll keep on moving. Welcome to Marty's Garden, a micro farm on the mid-north coast of Australia and New South Wales. This garden consists and grows under permaculture and agricultural sustainable principles lifestyle sustainability and self-sufficiency is what it's all about so this stuff what we're looking at here you can see all these fine leaves in it and different twigs and different size shapes and what we're looking for is we don't want any really big chunky bits like that's probably the biggest chunky bit I could find just by going through that handful. And we want to see if it's already, how dry it is, how aged it is. Because if it's aged further, that's even better. Because that means it's going to break down quicker into what the material that we're after. Now, there's a big stick there. And we're sort of digging through it. That looks pretty good. We'll head around the back and uh, have a look at the other, the other pile. See if we can get through the mud here. So we're just vlogging on the way. Now, leaf mold is absolutely brilliant, but it does take a long time to break down. So you want to get the finer stuff, like I said in the video. Now, remember if you're getting like a square meter, so a cubic feet, three cubic feet, generally breaks down to about one third the size. So if you're paying $90 and $30 for it, for a meter, you're only going to get one third. So it ends up costing you like 90 bucks. Think about it, I think that math's right there. Anyway, let's have a look. It looks really muddy through here, and we've got to try and get through. I kept on having it in my head, bring your gumboots, Marnie. I'm like, nah, it hasn't been raining. It hasn't been raining. Ugh. Is it gonna be worth going over here to have a look at this? He said it's really muddy, which means it is really muddy, because this is what they do here. I'm gonna sneak around this back bit up here. And so they back onto the bush here. I live in a beautiful place, man. I must admit, it is absolutely just awesome. And at the back here, you can see this big pile. So we'll head down to this pile and have a look. And I'll be getting enough for the season for me. Let's have a look at this. He said it's older, but it looks more dry to me. Ooh. Oh, look at that. As we break down into it, you can see there's more broken down material on the inside that's more humusy. Now, the moisture is into it, and I can see little bits of like humusy dirt in there as well. And not too many big chunky bits. So, I think that's pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm gonna get myself three square meters of this stuff and start blending it at home because I need to make more compost. I just love making compost and the worm's absolutely gonna love it. All right, let's head home in the Silver Fox and Simon will deliver this to my place, hopefully this morning. 
So I've got all this mulch to move. Look at it. Absolutely heaps of it. Three cubic meters, which is a nine cubic feet. And then I've got, I've moved about half of this pile here that you're looking at here. And I've got this other pile over here of compost to move. And underneath the green blanket, it's covered a lot in dirt. There's worm farms and things behind in there that will all come forward as well and into these bins, which I'll be showing in uh, upcoming content. But at first, we're getting back to this stuff. Now, the chickens have already found something going on in there. Which is pretty cool. We'll just have a look at the girls. See what they're doing. This only just turned up on the truck. Unfortunately, I didn't have the card in the truck to film when it got dropped off. And I was like, oh man. But anyway, never mind. Look, they're going through it. And over in the distance over here is like their penned up area, which I've fenced off and put the other little fence across. And so Look, I've got a lot of wheelbarrowing to do, but it's going to rain, which is perfect because um, I'm turning over the compost as well. And so these are other things we're going to be talking about. But this whole area is a bit of a mess, right, where the new coop is. It's all got to be cleaned up in here. They're making a fair bit of mess in here now, and there's a bit of carbon coming down from the tree above. But I've got to dump in a roundabout three cubic feet into here so one square meter into this oh so i was getting really hot outside i had to take all my jacket off and shirt off it's winter but coming back inside i'm cold again so I put the old flannel back on and oh i feel a bit better now it's cold in the old studio though anyway that's what it is eh? winter time here in australia well i'm in the subtropics so it's not too bad i shouldn't really complain Tell you what i've got a lot of moving of compost and that leaf mulch but what i decided to do why i come into the studio instead of being outside so i thought this is going to be really much easier for me to explain from here you see leaf mulch how i use it and how i teach people how to use it is it actually is like the beginning of the humus layer so when we've got compost on the ground and we put down a leaf mulch over the top and we start wetting it down. What we want to do is actually not put it on too thick because when it rains, we want the water to go right through that leaf mulch and hit that surface and start creating a soil bank for us. So the water starts storing. Now, if it's too thick, when you get light rains, it won't go through and penetrate right through the bottom. So we want to have this moisture locking against the leaf mulch when we're mulching. So I said I was only going to talk about three things, but you know, as I'm using it and sharing the knowledge, I just want to get out as much as I can while my brain's just going tick, 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 tick about how to use leaf mulch because I want you to get the best results. So the next way that I'm going to be using it is it's going to be going into the chicken coop and I'm going to spread some out and then I'm going to create a pile in the center and throw coffee on it and allow them to spread it out and then I'm just going to keep piling it on there over time and I'll scoop that out and then that will go into the worm farms so that'll be full of like already half broken down really humusy stuff and the worms absolutely love it now some of my bigger round 400 litre compost bins they're already two-thirds full and they've got compost worms in there and two the compost that's in the bins already is already two-thirds done so I'm going to fill them up to the top then I'm going to feed it slightly with a bit of horse manure and a bit of the coffee. I might even use horse manure if I don't have it. The coffee is the main thing. And feed the worms with that. And they'll be eating the leaf mold as it starts to rot down. And they'll be eating the coffee. And that will keep them warm also through the winter time. And then I'll have special blends coming out off those bins, which will be really awesome with a lot of worm castings in them. I'm saving my worms from getting out into the pile so much with the chickens getting them all. And when I'm bagging up the compost, I'm not losing all my cocoons and I'm not losing worms all the time and picking them out all the time. So I'm trying to create this efficient system that still produce a high quality, high end artisan compost.
Now also what I'm going to be doing is filling up one of the bins or a few of the bins with just leaf mould and feeding it coffee grounds. And that will become a potting mix. And at the end I'll check how much it needs to be done and I might need to add a little bit more of other compost and things to it. But that'll be the base. So that'll be my leaf mould base for coffee ground. So it's going to go a long way, that three square metres. The guy that dropped it off, Simon, he said, oh, man, that's a lot, you know. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's going to be used. And I probably will sell a bit as well if people, once it starts sort of breaking down, if people want to use it the way that I teach them. So a lot of stuff going on here and more to be shown to you guys because I really believe that artisan composting is a new art. And that's why it's called artisan, because I believe it's an art form. We need to create regenerative soils. We need to take care of our soils. We need to take care of our worms. We need to take care of our microbes. We need to think about we're farming below the soil with the microbes and the grass and the greens above as well and feeding that all. So when the plants photosynthesize, they're sharing that down to the root zone and it's creating this symbiosis of health. And that's when you get amazing plants because really composting and worm farming is all about just creating that compost so you can feed your plants amazing biology and get really healthy gardens just the way nature intended so if you're enjoying the show leave a comment down below any questions as well i'd love to see a big double bush ranger thumbs up aussie style Ned Kelly, if you don't know who Ned Kelly is, he was the guy that wore the, the big steel helmet with a thing across the front and a big steel armour and they had a big shoot off. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> Fan of Ned Kelly's, even though the history books may not even show the story in the right way. He was a bit of a wild character. But anyway, getting back to it, I think we need to head off with some tunes and some good little bit of video snippet at the end for you guys. Hope you got a lot out of that video. More to come in the vlogs. <sighs> Just got to keep rolling them out, right? Have a great day. Bring on the music. Happy gardening. Music, please. Yeah. The tunes. See you at the next video real soon. Don't forget to subscribe. More vlogs coming soon. Bye for now. Tell you what, guys. I got a lot to do, so make sure you come back and watch the next video because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with this leaf mulch and the composting area in the garden here on the micro farm here at Marty's Garden. Sweet ass. Oh, I'm going to be sore too. Gonna get dark before the noon. Gonna shine like a star. Gonna shine like a star.